Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to show you a free alternative to Lightroom. Now you might be thinking, well I've already got Lightroom, I've got Photoshop, why would I need it? Well I actually use this and I talk about this also in my advanced editing book, Advanced Editing for Real Estate Photography, why it's kind of important to have this for certain situations, especially when it comes to exteriors, you might find yourself that you need this and you know for, when you go outside of the real estate work flow and you're doing stuff that doesn't have a high quantity of pictures and you don't need the same type of workflow efficiency that you need with real estate, which is a very quick turn as you know, uh, is when you get into portraits, when you get into products, you might need something else. Now there's a lot of alternatives out there. I'm going to show you one. I'm a Nikon shooter, so I'm going to show you what comes with Nikon that's actually free talk about though how that could compare to other software programs and what this actually means when it comes to shooting in RAW and then how you can process your pictures with this. You ready to take a look at all this? Let's get started. So the program I'm going to talk about today is Capture NXD. Now this is by Nikon. It's a free program and if you buy a Nikon camera it comes with it. And you can go online and download it also. It only works with Nikon RAW files but every OEM equipment manufacturer, original equipment manufacturer, has software to decode their RAW files and work with their images. Canon has their own, Sony has their own, everybody has something. And if you notice, this looks a lot like Lightroom. This is once again just Nikon's version of how you would uh, process a RAW file. And you could also use this for JPEGs as well. But of course, the idea is, once again, you really do want to be shooting in RAW. You're going to get a lot of flexibility out of that. I talk about that in my, in my books as well for a lot of reasons and I show some of that in some of my other earlier tutorials but we're going to take a look at a couple pictures here just very simple here's a pool and then uh, at that same location there was then uh, this uh, exterior of the house but the important one that's really going to show through is what's going to happen with this pool shot now the one thing is is that Nikon having Nikon software, shooting this from a Nikon camera, they know exactly how to decode that RAW file, so it's going to look a certain way. Let's go over to Lightroom and let's see what happens if we try to use Lightroom to decode that RAW file. So I'm going to go into Lightroom and I'm going to import those two files. So I'm just going to go to File Import, you've done this a bunch of times, no big deal, and I'm going to go ahead and select those. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see, these files here they look alright, they look pretty much like they did when they were in NXD, but these are little thumbnails okay, that are included inside of the RAW file that are being shown. What's deceiving is this hasn't yet decoded the RAW file. What's going to happen after I import them, they will. So let's take a look what happens. Let's go ahead and import those and keep a real close eye on those icons. Here we go, it's importing those files. Now watch those icons and you're going to see something change. Boom, boom. Now the colors completely changed. A lot of the contrast changed in that also. The reason being is that while Capture NXD can decode the RAW file knowing every portion of it, a lot of the RAW file information is pertinent to the camera's sensor and so that's hidden proprietary information that other third-party software like Adobe products just won't be able to read so it doesn't know exactly how to do that. So let's take a look here. Let's compare some things. So if I were to bring both of these files into just Lightroom like I did or Capture NXD, you can see there's a very big difference. Let's start with the sky. You can see that Capture NXD might have a little bit of magenta in there where Lightroom has that, but look at the, has more blue I should say. Look at the, the uh, skyline. There wasn't a very good color grading to be able to tell what was happening when we got down to the horizon. Now the horizon is always lighter, but it's so pronounced when you're in Lightroom that the shadows, everything, it almost looks like it was HDR. It was that bad. And excuse me for HDR shooters out there, I didn't mean to, to bag on you for that, but you know I'm not an HDR fan. Um, but let's take a look at some other stuff in here. Look at the water too. A 
big difference. The water actually with just Capture NXT, once again, there's been no settings at all. This is just bringing it right into one piece of software, exporting it, bring it into another piece of software and exporting it here. And you can see a big difference in the concrete too down here. It looks much better in Capture NXT where Lightroom, it just completely blows it out. Now, not all hope is lost. If you bring it into Lightroom, you do some adjustments, you can get something a little better. So here's a comparison now with three different versions. And I go into depth uh, uh, quite a lot more in my advanced editing book on what's really happening here. But you can see that Lightroom, like we showed before, it's all kind of screwed up. Uh, Capture NXD is over here on the right. Something in between though is with some adjustments. It, we were able to get rid of some of that uh, awful, awful highlight to shadow gradient um, in the sky. Uh, we improved the watercolor. Um, in fact, the watercolor could be argued that it's actually better than what Capture NXD did, and maybe even the color of the sky. So you do have that option, but when it really comes down to saying, I want to get an accurate color representation. I want to know exactly what my white balance is. I'm setting it. I did everything I'm supposed to do, and I want to see that exactly what needs to happen. Well, that's what you need to have Capture NXD for, or the OEM software for your camera. If you have a Canon camera, then obviously you can use their software. Sony camera, you can use theirs as well. Now, it's not as efficient though to use something like Capture NXD. First, I'm gonna go through the things that it has that can help you get to where you need to be. And then I'm gonna show you a practical way to use it for the real estate workflow. So if I bring in this file, I can do a variety of things with it. Most of the time, and I've already got them checked here, I can, if you look over here on the right, I've got both types of uh, ab aberration, that's your chromatic aberrations that are being taken care of. I've also got distortion control. Now I can turn it off, I can turn it on. And the funny thing with this is that since it's Nikon software, unless it's a Nikon lens, this isn't really going to do anything. You'd still have to do your distortion control in Lightroom, which we're going to get to that in just a second. It's also got vignette control. So without just having one common adjustment out of a, a lens correction profile like you'd have in Lightroom, this actually you can adjust for how much vignetting you want. So this is just your standard uh, lens correction stuff. But I can also do, you can see up at the top here, there's a lot of different things I can do with different adjustments. I can uh, take the exposure, bump it up and down. I can change also the white balance. I can do a variety of things. On white balance, it even has a dropper that I can use similar to what Lightroom has. So I've got that gray point sampler that I can also use, or I can adjust the white balance just like I would. But I've also got other things I can do. It's got in here uh, things to do for noise reduction. It has also then, like we were talking about with the lens correction, which I showed first. It's got also the typical LCH uh, type of things. The uh, It's got a straightener, which uh, it's not the greatest thing, it's, so I'd rather use some other program for that. Um, it does have unsharp mask, which I really don't care to use this. I'd rather do that later. And I use, uh, for instance, smart sharpening, something I talk about and show in detail in the advanced editing book. Um, and then also I've got levels and curves. But for the most part, what I really do is I just take the lens correction stuff. I see where I like it. That looks good. I might make an adjustment to the exposure if I think it needs to here. But in this case, it exposed very well. I'm very happy with it. So I can right click on this. I can copy those updated adjustments. I can then take and select all my pictures and I can paste those adjustments as well, just like I would have in Lightroom. And then what you would do is you would convert those files. So you can right click, convert the files, and then it asks you what format. And what I do is I export those in TIFF. Now I've already exported one. And what I would typically do for exteriors is I would copy all of my stuff into an for the exterior shots into a separate folder. I go through Capture NXD, apply those simple corrections to it, and then export those out, convert those, I should say, in NXD speak, and then I import those into Lightroom. So let's go back over here to Lightroom and let's import that file. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. And for this tutorial, I put it actually in this uh, directory called exported. So all that I'm gonna do here, I don't want any of these except for this guy here. He's the one that we exported. So I can go ahead and bring him in, import him in here. And then with him, I can also then develop and apply just anything I want. Now, if you notice, he didn't change. He didn't have that weird type of change from when it's decoding the raw file, also known as debayering. 
Um, so when I develop him, he's going to look a lot like he does in Capture NXD because it really is now the same file. It's just that this is a TIFF, which doesn't now have to be decoded. So I can do some stuff here. I can go and apply like uh, one of my bumps to it. Um, and that looks pretty good. Even just applying that to it, bring back some of the highlights. And you can see just in that, there's a real nice difference in the before and after with just a simple preset uh, that I applied to it. Maybe bring up a little bit of vibrance in it, however I want, maybe a little bit more whites. Whatever the deal is though, you can see that now I have a full adjustment using Lightroom to go ahead and make my changes instead of having Lightroom make changes that I don't like beforehand. So once again, taking a look at one of these differences, you can see Lightroom did a terrible job at trying to decode this. We can see that in great detail here compared to Capture NXD. If we did though bring in the raw file into Lightroom, then um, you can apply some presets or other adjustments and then you can have it export out and you can get it pretty close to what the OEM software would have seen or something that might in some cases even be better for that. So these are just some options for you to bring this into your workflow is to first then use something that's OEM software, make all those changes that you'd like and then convert that to a TIFF and put that with the rest of the raw files that you'd be bringing in. Would I do this for all the interior shots? Goodness no. That's just crazy. Some of it I'm going to have so many presets applied to it anyways in Lightroom, but when it comes to exteriors, things like skies are very noticeable. The, uh, the color of trees and branches, those things are stuff that people are going to be uh, very much aware of. So when we look at the differences here, for me, I would rather than use the OEM software than trying to use Lightroom to decode my raw files. So Capture NXD is just one alternative that uh, it's free. You don't need Lightroom to do it. But would you use that in all of your real estate workflow? Well, no, of course not. In fact, I can't um, because I want to be able to open as layers. I'm working through a lot of other stuff. I might have multiple uh, images taken so that I can do some exposure blending. Also, I want to be able to keep those with all the other pictures that I took for a particular house, particular property, so I can quickly move through those and be exporting those out as I need to. And so it really is good for decoding your RAW files, but it's not necessarily good for your workflow, which brings me on then to the rest of the alternatives that are out there. There's always something like Capture One or some other new ones that are always coming out there. Some people will come out with new software, done a great job making them and they'll make it easy that if you're taking a picture you can do a lot of massaging with it and make it look really great. But when it comes to a professional workflow, usually just editing one picture doesn't quite cut it. So not just working in layers like you'd have to in Photoshop, but also with working with multiple images in multiple layers in Photoshop and having that uh, consistent workflow. And then of course there's the advanced edits like I talk about in my advanced editing book. A lot of that stuff just isn't going to be available in Photoshop, the Adobe products, like them or love them, they've become the industry standard. And so there's a lot of information on there to help you support what you need to do for editing all of your pictures. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this tutorial, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.